This is the Farms.com Soybean Report brought to you by Dow Seeds. Dow Seeds, leaders in customer-first technology. Hi, I'm Tim Borrow, commercial agronomist with Dow Seeds. Today I'd like to speak with you about uh, what to look for when your soybean crop is emerging to see how well it's, it's doing as it starts off its life. One of the first things you should look for when you enter your soybean field is how consistently is your crop emerging? How many plants are there down the row? Are they all evenly growing at the same leaf stage? Are they evenly spaced? That's the first thing to look for to see how, how good your planting job was. Next thing you'll want to do when you're reviewing the overall crop is to see if there's any damage, any damage from insects or any plants that are not doing so well that might be affected by disease. The symptoms of those things can look like uh, either plants that are wilting or plants that have bite marks on them or parts of the plants are missing altogether due to insect damage. Those are the things to look at firstly to, to see if your crop is in, in good healthy condition. And then you'll also want to look at the population. Did you hit your target of your seeding rate? Are all the plants there that you want to have there? Different row widths have different uh, number of plants per foot to look for. So there are lots of uh, spots on the internet to find uh, population ratings for different row widths. But as an, just for an example, uh, a seven inch row width at 160,000 population, you should be looking at a little over two plants per foot of row. And at the other end of the scale, on a 30 inch row width, uh, at 160,000 population, you want to see around 9 to 10 plants per foot of row. If you have multiple varieties in your field, you want to do a compare and contrast between the varieties to see how they're doing so that you have that information in your memory banks for the following year when you're making your variety selections. So a couple of the soil diseases that may be affecting your crop, one is Phytophthora root rot, and the symptoms of that are what's called damping off, or a plant that's looking kind of waterlogged and limp, and maybe even starting to die off uh, due, to the, due to the root disease that's in there. Another disease, a soil-borne disease to watch out for is Rhizoctonia root rot. And the symptoms of that disease are a brownish, reddish lesion on the stem just at or below the soil line uh, that will be causing the plant to, to turn, uh, to not do so well or maybe even die off. Some insects that may be affecting your crop early in its life cycle are seed corn maggot, which seems a little peculiar that it's seed corn maggot, but it's affecting soybeans. Seed corn maggot tends to be a little bit of a warmer weather insect. Soybeans tend to be planted a bit later into warmer soil, so the seed corn maggot is, is more active when soybeans are planted typically. And the damage from that will look like uh, boreholes in the seed when you dig them up from the ground. They'll be missing plants, and if you dig up the seeds, you'll find that this, the, the, the seed corn maggot has bored into the seed and, and destroyed it. Slugs can also be a problem with soybeans, uh, especially in fields with high crop residue left from the previous crop. And the damage from slugs is above ground, and the slug will have uh, eaten off the cotyledons and stem, or parts of the cotyledon and stem. So you'll see that, that parts of the above ground parts of the plant are, are missing due to the slug feeding. In lighter textured soils, grubs can be a problem. What grubs do is eat the roots underground. And so you may see some poorer, doing, poorer performing plants, and if you dig them up and there's, there's roots missing, that will be grub feeding. And one other insect that can affect the soybean plant early in its life is soy, soybean aphids. Uh, they're above ground, small, tiny green insects that get on the plant and suck the juice out of them. So when you're evaluating your field for emergence and for seeding depth and consistent spacing, what plays a big role in that is whether you've used a drill or an air seeder versus a planter. Drills and air seeders don't tend to give you the seed singulation that a planter does, and so we'll see a, an uneven spacing down the row. Uh, most drills also don't give you the seed depth control that a planter does, and so you'll see uneven emergence, some plants being quite a bit ahead of other plants. So looking in this, this couple of rows right, right here, we can see there's some plants here that are at the unifoliate stage. This plant here is just barely 
coming into the unifoliate stage, right behind it here, one that's just emerged with the cotyledons out. And then here in the trench, we can see there's a, a bean plant here that's rooted. It'll probably emerge in a day or so. And then there's one bean right here that has a bit of a root on and really has just started growing in the last day or so. So as you can see that with a drill, you get quite a variable germination, a lot of different stages, and we're probably seven to 10 days after planting, and we're seeing this, this wide variation of germination with a drill. These seeds will still grow and they'll still produce. Um, so and typically we don't tend to use, lose a lot of seed, but it just doesn't look the best uh, right at the time of emergence until the plants get up to about the first or second trifoliate until everything fills in. If this had been a planter, chances are all the, all the plants would have been very close to the same stage of emergence, same leaf stage, and it would look much more uniform. For more information, please visit our website at www.dowseeds.ca. This has been the Farms.com Soybean Report, brought to you by Dow Seeds. Dow Seeds, leaders in customer-first technology.